Shalom and welcome to Temple Talk today, 25th day of the month of Mar Cheshvan, 5775. It is November 18th, 2014. This week, the sixth Torah portion of the book of Bereshit, Genesis, Parshat, Toldot, and in fact, the Sabbath of blessing the new moon of the month of Kislev, the month of Hanukkah, which actually falls out this Saturday night, Rosh Chodesh Kislev, is this coming Sunday. It's with a heavy heart that we come to the microphone today on uh, this Tuesday for Temple Talk. Just a few hours ago here in Jerusalem, the Holy City, a massacre in a synagogue here in the neighborhood of Harnof in what's called Western Jerusalem, two Muslim terrorists entered into a synagogue in uh, the time of the morning service, and um, two cousins apparently from uh, East Jerusalem, uh, one of them working in a grocery store right near the synagogue, came into the synagogue with a gun and knives and uh, hatchets and uh, attacked the worshippers there uh, that were in their talitot and their talit and tefillin during the morning service took anywhere from reports of 7 to 11 minutes for police to respond. And in the meantime, um, four, four Jews were killed. And from what I understand, if I'm reading reports correctly, there are 26 orphans um, as, as of this moment that I know of. Names are slowly being released. All this... Um, in the week of Parshat Toldot, which is basically the story of a clash of worlds, a co- worlds in collision, a clash of civilizations between Esav and Yaakov. Esav, of course, classically represents Edom, the West. Um, you may say this is not an issue of Ishmael, this is an issue of Esav, the West, but the truth is that there is an alliance between Esav and Ishmael. And in fact, the sages teach us that in the the time prior to the redemption, there is going to be a very unholy alliance between Esav and Ishmael that are going to come together against Israel, which of course is what we're seeing in the world today. Regarding the terrible tragedy of the terror attack this morning, it's hard to um, to define. It's hard to discuss. It's hard. To, it's hard to um, to express ourselves. We saw some images this morning uh, that I don't think were seen by most people. Yitzchak and I saw them on our, in our, our own sources. Images of the massacre in the synagogue that honestly evoked thoughts of the of the of the massacre in Hebron in 1929. Um, to see to see Jews uh, murdered that way in a synagogue, to think of that happening in Jerusalem, in Israel. So, um, in the meantime, uh, how do we how do we uh, express ourselves? You know, uh, two days ago there was a, an incident here in Jerusalem where a an Arab bus driver that worked for the large bus. Uh, company here in Israel, Eged, was found dead in, the, in a bus that he drove in a manner in which the police decided conclusively was suicide. He was found hung in, in his bus. And immediately uh, so-called Palestinian sources began to say that actually he was beaten by settlers and there is proof of that and they and he, and it had to be the body had to be sent to the forensic institute etc cetera, etc cetera. police established beyond any doubt that this man from East Jerusalem committed suicide but the arabs decided that there that this actually was murder and so they went on a rampage another 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 uh, stage of rampage because the the first rampage is from last week and the week before had to stop new rampage called you know days of rage and um, and are blaming uh, the Jews for this Yitzchak if we were if we were first of all I mean the man committed suicide second of all this template of of um, uh, going on this. Uh, 
rampage of, of, of days of rage. I mean, if Jews were going to go on days of rage every time a Jew was killed, I think we would, it wouldn't be days of rage, it would be like eons of rage, if that was our, uh, our um, system also. In any event, um, no one's claimed responsibility for this yet, but Hamas... Oh, uh, they have. Oh, have they? Uh, uh, Hamas... Uh, no, believe. Hamas did not claim responsibility, but they praised it. The same it Hamas... A, jihad said, claimed? Somebody claimed, I thought. I, I just saw this morning that Hamas didn't claim responsibility, but praised it very highly. And of course, one of the items that's been in the news lately is, the, is how Israel has been secretly treating the closest relatives of the leaders of Hamas in our hospitals under wraps. In the meantime, Hamas that governs over Gaza, the charter of Hamas is not about helping the people of Gaza. It's not about, it's not about um, uh, representing the, the, the Arab people. It's about destroying Israel. That's the whole purpose of the, of the creation of Hamas in the first place. In the meantime, um, Netanyahu says that Israel will respond decisively. Netanyahu says that Israel will respond with a, a heavy hand. Netanyahu blames Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian media for incitement. And he blames the world for being silent over Palestinian uh, incitement. A Allow me to interrupt, Rabbi. You mentioned a minute ago the Arab, uh, you know, response to a, a suicide is a, you know, a day of rage and a rampage and and murder and uh, more terror. And you said, oh, if we Jews were to adopt the same uh, 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 mo, then uh, we would have eons of rage. We Jews won't adopt that same mo, but we Jews here in the land of Israel. We do need to adopt some kind of leadership that 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 okay, stands that. up and and doesn't just make statements. Well, wait a minute! But Bibi said that we're going to deal with statements. it. We were making statements about Abbas about dealing with it, and then you have Lieberman comes out and makes even more, you know, uh, bombastic statements. They're good with statements. Uh, listen. At the same time, we have the same people in 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 the in the government and in the Knesset saying. You know, blaming it on Jews that go to the Temple Mount, and we have to back off from that. We have to make it forbidden because it's we're upsetting the Arabs. We have a uh, to my to my tremendous uh, shame. We have a chief rabbi that after he condemned Jews for going up to the Temple Mount, uh, and. Uh, practically called them the sons of pigs and monkeys. Excuse me. <laughs> practically called them the sons of pigs and monkeys. He never you said know, that. He uh, just said uh, that uh, they're Islamic fourth league. Expression, uh, d uh, description of Jews. And today came out and said, well, it's forbidden to, f to, to pray in a synagogue that doesn't have an armed guard an at the door. Guard. What is going on here? We're, they're shooting at us. They're, they're stabbing. They're slaughtering. They're butchering. And we're shooting at each other. So listen. What is going on? Where is the leadership? And if you ask me, it all has emanated this last wave of terror, which has been building up for, for months and broke out a month ago and is in full flower right now. It emanates from the situation on the Temple Mount that we have been talking about for months, that they've been talking about in the Knesset for months, that, that they decided to ignore and sweep under the table. And now Netanyahu is, is uh, back kowtowing to, to uh, Abdullah and to Abbas and to everybody else to try to quiet things down in the Temple Mount. You know, we're, we're what can I say? You know, we're, we're inside out, we're backwards, we're, we're where we're shooting at ourselves when we should be shooting at the enemy. We're a body without a head. This is the third intifada. Welcome. Welcome to the silent intifada. Not so silent anymore. This is the third intifada, which will not stop until we begin to demonstrate sovereignty, which is what is expected. So you just said everything. You just, you just mentioned everything that there is to be mentioned in a very, in a very uh, fast manner. The fact is, again... Uh, Netanyahu blames everybody. He blames Abbas. He blames uh, the, the Palestinian leadership. Members and media. of Knesset he who go up to the Temple Mount. He blames and thus inflame and, and, the Arabs. And there are plenty of people at the moment that are also blaming the Jews for going to the Temple Mount. Just this morning, a, a member of Knesset spoke and said that the Jews have to stop going up to the Temple Mount. 
And I suppose we're supposed to be very happy, appreciative, and excited, but Abbas did issue a statement of condemnation this morning, and probably because um, Secretary of State Kerry said it was very, very important that he does that. Secretary of State Kerry, by the way, who I can only think of one thing at this moment, and that is the color red, because he, to me, is the embodiment of Esav. Esav is described as being a very hairy, hairy man, and one of <laughs> Kerry's most important characteristics is his beautiful uh, hairdo. And every hair is always in place. And the fact is that Kerry, whose wife, of course, is Mrs. Ketchup, is, um, that's so Hi, red. That that's so red. And the West, Esav, who said to Yaakov, pour it down my throat, this red stuff. And so he said that he, it's very important to him that uh, Abbas uh, and the Palestinian leadership condemned this. Can I, so Abbas, just can a second. I so Abbas second? condemns it. Abbas condemns it, but he said in the same statements that he basically uh, condemned uh, violence, no matter who was doing it. Right. He also said he connected it, and in the same statement he said that the settlers should stop their incursions to El Aqsa. And one of the he points he didn't issue a condemnation. He re reissued a standard condemnation that. That points the fingers at the, the finger at the Jews for starting it exactly. all, exactly, which has been going on since Arafat, you know, was first compelled to issue a condemnation, and that's the that's the nature of these condemnations. They point the finger at the Jews. Where the fault? They're innocent. Killing Jews is a glorious pastime. This is what we got now. We have we have these uh, horrible murders like you've never seen in the synagogue. Meat cleavers on the floor, hatchets, blood, and horrible murders. Twenty six orphans. And Netanyahu says we will know how to respond, and it will be with a heavy hand. And in the meantime, is it Abbas's fault? Is it Palestinian incitement? incitement? Is it world silence? No, it is our fault because we cannot seem to take uh, the lead. We cannot seem to initiate. We, Netanyahu is reacting, and the fact is, just just this morning, there were more statements issued by police and security sources saying, listen. This appeared to be a lone wolf kind of attack. And, you know, it's very comforting and reassuring that the Minister, Minister of Internal Security just recently said, uh, oh, it was, I mean, there has been so many attacks, it's hard for me to keep track, but at one of the train attacks, he said, this isn't going to be the last one, you know. There's going to be more. And now this morning they said, listen, we can't stop lone wolf attacks. And we also can't stop a grassroots attack, you know, that just uh, just happened spontaneously. So what can you stop exactly? What can you stop exactly? And in the meantime, last week in the video that we did, the lesson on Parshat Chaye Sarah, we, we tried to explore the concept and explain a little bit the concept of the fact that there is no Palestinian people. I say that in a whisper because I, I know it's so politically incorrect to say that, but there really isn't. But the PLO themselves have admitted that it's a well-known fact that it was a strategic decision of the Arab world to decide that there is a Palestinian cause. Go and find me some Palestinian archaeology, archaeological remains. Talk to me about the Palestinian language. Talk to me about Palestinian tradition. Our problem is that we ourselves, our leadership seems to be committed to, to upholding this bluff because it's expected already. The world, it's just, it's just on cruise control. You know, Obama in Cairo said, stood there with the teleprompter saying, you know how he holds his lips a certain way? He like rolls his lips a certain way. It's like very, you know, he said two peoples with two aspirations, two legitimate claims to this land, what in the world are you talking about? Go and learn history of what this is really all about. But yet, and we discussed this so thoroughly in, 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 in last week's uh, Torah portion on Chai Sarah, the history of the land of Israel, the history of, of the populations of the land of Israel. But unfortunately, um, we, we seem ourselves to have bought this this merchandise, this uh, nazid, this uh, porridge, this pottage. Yeah, this bowl of lentils. We we are trading our birth. Thank you, Yitzhak. Unbelievable! Wow, you're knocking me off my chair. We are Yaakov, and we are we are selling our birthright for a sandwich and a beer. 
The sandwich and the beer is basically the promise of of some sort of two-state solution. Yeah, Western. Western will be able to, you know, enjoy ourselves in Europe and uh, whatever. And if the only thing that will stop this, and listen to me, God forbid, God forbid, but the feeling is... This is this is a whole new thing now. We're coming into a new era, and everybody's shocked. Everybody is absolutely beside themselves that in a shul, right? In the shul, in your local neighborhood shul, you know, you go to shul. You get up in the morning, you take your talit and tefillin, you walk to shul. What greater joy is there? You go to shacharit, right? So in your neighborhood synagogue, two Arabs come in, yelling Allah Akbar. Yeah, they did. They did. Hello, it is a religious war, and we didn't start it. Because uh, you're not allowed to say it's a religious war. <laughs> That's another thing. You have to say that, it, you know, there's extremists. On, and, th- and then you'll say there's extremists on both sides. Because <laughs> so, it's really always our fault. They come in and they butcher Jews. And you know what? The next stage is going to be, God forbid, I'm sorry for saying this, but this is how we feel. They're going to come into our houses also. Because they can't stop lone wolves. And they can't stop grassroots. And so a former police commissioner this morning aired publicly his feelings, and he said that every single citizen who owns a gun should really be carrying it, because you can't rely on the government. And the reason that you can't rely on the government, my friends, is because we don't have a government that is willing to stop the lie, the historical lie about the Palestinian people. And we don't have a government that is willing to stand up and say, until here, now it stops, and we will exercise sovereignty and let me tell you something else and if you don't remember anything else that we've ever said please i ask you to remember this one thing this whole lie about the temple mount about how it's the fault of the jews that are going up to the temple mount because we always we're very very good at blaming ourselves you know what the temple mount is the litmus test it's not the cause it's the indicator what's happening now is not because Jews are going to the Temple Mount. What's happening on the Temple Mount is an indicator of exactly and what's going on. It was an early warning on. indicator that exactly they, what's they chose going to on. And listen, as far as the chief rabbi is concerned, and last week I didn't name names, and we were very heated, and we were beside ourselves with aggravation over the over the dirty, sullying, political, manipulative war of words that's been going on, uh, 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 and that, and and we made it quite clear about the exile mentality that has that has taken over the the bodies the body snatchers right the invasion of the exile mentality that has taken over entire bureaus and ministries and rabbis who say that the temple will come from heaven and you can't go to the temple mount and it's nothing but empty demagoguery because and i've gotten questions from jason and and from ibri and from all kinds of people wrote a letter saying, please, we always respected the office of the chief rabbi. We want to understand, explain to, explain to me how, why are they saying these things? And, 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 the, and the video lesson that was shared of Rav Avadya Zetzal, the father of the current Sephardic chief rabbi, saying, Kurit, 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 a thousand tefillot in the mikvah won't help you because if you go there, you have Kurit. And any fourth-rate, if you'll pardon me, fourth-rate Torah scholar knows that isn't true. Why is he saying that? It isn't true. We, where we go is not the area of Kareid. It's not the forbidden area of the Temple Mount at all. It's an explicit Mishnah that you could be in Tumat Mates, for all those who understand what I'm talking about, in that place. So what's going on here is that there isn't any room for discussion here. They don't want to discuss it. They don't want this light to come into the world and now the same chief rabbi who last week attacked jews for going to the temple mount and and said it's all their fault and they have to stop and wrote a letter to the prime minister saying stop the jews from going to the temple mount let me stay here in exile right let me stay here in the old order i want to be in charge of the old order which by the way is so reminiscent of the Midrashim to talk about the motivation of the princes in the desert, you know, the spies who basically, they, like, they were so worried about losing their jobs and losing their control. So, so he's saying, no, stop the Jews from, from wanting the holy temple. Now the same rabbi who said that Jews shouldn't be praying on the Temple Mount is saying a new halachic, a new halachic ruling 
it's forbidden to, to daven in a shul to pray in a synagogue that doesn't have an armed guard. And that's what we're coming to now, B'medinat Yisrael. That's what we're coming to in the, in the eternal capital, Jerusalem, the state of Israel, that we came home. I thought, I thought we're finished with pogroms and the Cossacks and the marauders and the crusaders was, and the Nazis. Wasn't that the whole point of, of the IDF? Wasn't that the whole point of having a, 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 an Israel? So now, and do you think that we want to walk around armed? Do you think we, we enjoy this, this, this machismal image? Do you think that it's necessary for a Jew to have to have a pistol on his hip or, a, or, or even to wear a bulletproof vest? Do you think it's normal? That's not the way life is supposed to be. That's not the vision of Isaiah. And here he's going and he's saying, more than that, he's saying, it, you can't take your life in your hands like this by, by going to the synagogue anymore. Don't go to the synagogue unless there's an armed guard. And all this, as, as Yitzchak made very clear, it's all emanating from the fact that we can't go to the Temple Mount to pray. And the only way that this will stop is when Israel exercises sovereignty over the land of Israel emanating from the Temple Mount and says, you know what, this isn't like a, a passing fancy. I'm sorry, but we're not planning on, on self-immolating or going someplace or splitting a, 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 a dagger down the middle of our heart. You know, it's like, yalla, enough is enough. Enough is enough to the, to the, to the, to the carry. Enough is enough to all of them. But instead, we just go, we just go dragging this, this farce along. So there's a headline in Arut Sheva this week that the EU, there's a revelation that the EU has a secret paper. Right? The EU's secret paper is that they've got all these plans for, for sanctions against Israel if we don't toe the line. And if Israel basically doesn't... And what was the main aspect of that paper, of the sanctions, if we, if we cross the red line? And the red line basically is building in Jerusalem, if we continue to build in Jerusalem. And there you go again. There you have it, the collusion between Esav and Ishmael coming against Israel. It's all in this week's Torah portion. It's all happening today. And he can talk from today to tomorrow, Netanyahu, about how we're going to be responsive and how we're going to deal with a heavy hand. And the fact is, nothing here is going to change until we are committed to the truth, as if it's going to stop, as if it's going to stop if we do react with a heavy hand, as if it's going to stop. The only thing that's going to possibly stop the third the silent intifada, the only thing that's going to build the temple, the only thing that's going to reinstate the Jewish people as the as the sovereign of the land of Israel is to declare just that and to be willing to face the consequences instead of playing these games for which so many people are losing their lives. That's what it's really all about. And it's all foretold by Rivka and by Yitzchak in Parsha Toldo. Stay with us as we, as we grapple with the identity crisis of the people of Israel. We'll be right back. Temple Talk. Welcome back to Temple Talk. Today, the 25th day of the month of Mar Cheshvan, 5775, 18th day of November uh, 2014. Of course, we've been discussing the massacre, the horrible uh, terror attack which took place uh, this morning in a Jerusalem synagogue for holy Jews and their talitot and their tefillin were massacred by two uh, Muslims who took umbrage to the fact that Jews exist in the world. Um, you know, I know in America right now, after Obama took his beating, Democrats took their beating at, in the midterm elections, that everyone uh, is, uh, is expecting, you know, the next uh, executive order to be issued by Obama and his overstepping of his of his executive privileges and his trampling on the on the American Constitution, and uh, a lot of people are very very uh, concerned about this and and understandably uh, outraged about it. I just to explain to people because you might wonder, you know, if Netanyahu says we're going to deal with a heavy hand, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and you know he's a very respectable leader in the world. So what are you guys saying? 
that you know the government's not doing anything. The problem is that when Netanyahu says, let's, for an example, in last week's terror attack, maybe it was the weeks before, I don't know, he said, we're going to reinstate the policy of destroying the homes of terrorists, you know, as a, as a um, method of, uh, of uh, deterring, you know, other terrorists. So in order to do that, he issues an order to the army. Now, the army still has not destroyed a single house of a terrorist of any of the attacks in the past three weeks because they're waiting to hear what the Supreme Court's going to say. God forbid the army of Israel should make a move that might, you know, cause them uh, some kind of problem with the legal system here. And of course, nobody wants to go near the Supreme Court because they're out there in la-la land. I don't know what world they're on. And, uh, you know, they don't allow any, the government to do anything. So until we have a government that's willing to say, you know, I'm not going to play by these games, these rules that we ourselves set up for ourselves, and I'm going to break our own, you know, emasculation process, then we're not going to start combating, you know, any of these, any of this terror. We're not going to be taking on the issue. We can't, we can't demand anything of anybody else, of all the Asavs and Yishmaels in the world. We can't demand a thing when we ourselves, you know, have tied ourselves up and don't have, the, our leadership doesn't have the courage to, you know, cut through the Gordian To stand nut. up for the Jewish people, to yeah. protect the Jewish people. We're so concerned about, about uh, you know, these, these um, you know, highfalutin values of democracy, of protecting everyone's rights, except the people who, uh, the, for whom the state was founded to protect, who are now feeling so totally vulnerable and unprotected. And and the fact is, you know, um, it's it's continuing now because there is no leadership at all. Let's let's take a look back at the, at the parasha Toldot. We have the conflict between the two lifestyles, but as you pointed before, two clash of civilizations really between Asaph, who was the hunter, and he had the hunt in his mouth, meaning he was a hunter and a liar and a deceiver. And we have uh, Yaakov, who was the the. Uh, the uh, simple or perfected man dwelling in tents, uh, pursuing a spiritual truth in life. And yet, when it came to the issue of the birthright and of the blessing, Yaakov, with his mother, uh, Rivka, did what had to be done to get it. You know, that was what was important. So they'll call us, they'll call me a deceiver, they'll, they'll say I tricked uh, uh, Esav and Esav will cry because the one thing that the the Esavs of the world do almost as good as the, as as they as they murder and slaughter and destroy everything and everything that's alive and beautiful in the world is that then they cry after they do that they cry to the world last week it was Yishmael who was crying in the in the desert and now this week it's Esav who's crying oh I've been deceived oh you know I I I he took advantage of me. It, oh, the cry always comes after the outrage. It's like you were talking about the courts tying the hands of the IDF and the government over the demolition of houses. What about the death penalty? What about the death what about penalty? This, what, is, what is it with this house demolition? That is like, wow, that is like such a deterrent. How about the death penalty, the way it should be for these murderers? And that's really what, what should happen. So in the meantime, we're just dealing with all these lies, the lie of Palestinian nationalism. We know where these people came from. We know their history. We know their lineage. We know the numbers. We know about the population uh, density. We know about history. We know what's been going on in this land. And so, you know, John Kerry can say that he condemns in the strong in ter strongest terms. He says it's this, uh, this act of barbarism has no place in humanity. But I, you know what? You have no place in my country. You have no place in, in, my, in my children's future. You have no place determining our borders. You have no place to, you know, determining that Jerusalem is not the capital of Israel. So what in the world are you telling me that this barbarism has no place in humanity? You have no place in my humanity. And what do you have to do all together with who we are and where we're going? And this I say also to Netanyahu. Stop being the puppet of so many other regimes. Just last week, 
he, the secret summit wasn't so secret uh, between Netanyahu and the King of Jordan uh, about the Temple Mount lie because nothing has changed on the Temple Mount in the 30 years that we've been reporting about it. There is no change on the status quo. How many years has Temple Talk existed? I think this is the 10th year. How many years have we been talking about Jews going up feebly like, like Nebuchadnezzar trying to mumble some prayers on the Temple Mount even though it's illegal, even the Supreme Court says that they should be allowed to pray. How many years have we been talking about that? And now all of a sudden, everybody's talking about how we're trying to change the status quo. So the Netanyahu, the big man, has to come out and say, no, I'm not changing the status quo, I promise. It's holy to us, but we'll, I'll never allow the Jews to pray there. As if that's something to be proud of. And now we read that at this summit, Netanyahu urged the King of Hussein, uh, the King Hussein of Jordan to become more actively involved in policing the Temple Mount, to strengthen the waqf, to stop disturbances on the, on the Temple Mount. And of course, under um, American pressure this past Friday, Netanyahu lifted restrictions and allowed 40,000 worshipers of all ages to go onto the Temple Mount. I got news for you. These young men that, that carried out the, this horrible butchery here this morning in the shul in Harnof, they, they've been to the Temple Mount. They're the type of, of young men that go to the Temple Mount to pray. This is, it's all connected. And in the meantime, again, Netanyahu blaming Abbas, blaming the world. You know what? It's, it's not, I blame him. It's not anybody's fault except for him because he will not act in the manner that a leader of the Jewish people has to act and take responsibility for protecting his own people. And instead of erecting concrete blocks near train stations and instructing the police to go around with their lights flashing, and instead of demolishing houses, which we'll never be able to do anyway, they won't let us, and all these other things, the fact is, draw the line. And the line is, this is the, this is the only place we have, this, and it's ours, and I owe you nothing. I owe you no explanation even neither to Esav nor to Ishmael. I don't owe you any explanation. You can't stop the grassroots. You can't stop the lone wolf operations. Yeah, you can. You can stop it. You can stop it very, very easily. And, and the lie of, of, it, of it being because of, of MKs, members of Knesset and Jewish settlers that are going on to the Temple Mount, the PLO that was founded before the establishment of the State of Israel, back in the days when if you look at the photographs of the Temple Mount, there was no interest in it whatsoever, right? Every time we start to open up an eye, that sleeping lion that Bilam foresaw, every time the lion of Israel starts to open up an eye and starts to get up a little bit and starts to flex a little muscle and show a little tshuva and show a little interest that we have a spiritual awakening and we're coming back, that makes them so nervous and they have to come on to all this nonsense about about uh, what we're doing, and of course, we you know there are there are elements amongst us that buy it, hook, line, and sinker, you know, elements in the Knesset, elements ministers that say, oh, it's the it's our fault. We're going to the Temple Mount, and 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 and, and we're aggravating them as if anything is going to change if we stop going to the Temple Mount, as if our existence is not what's aggravating them, as if you forgot everything that they said and they promised and they constantly broadcast and write, as if you're not paying attention to what they're, to the truth that they're telling you. So the fact is, uh, there is such a direct relationship between what's going on in the Temple Mount and what's going on here, but it's not the relationship that they're implying. It's not because we're instigating. It's not because we're changing the status quo. It's not because of, of anything except for the fact that there's no surprise here, because if we degrade the Temple Mount, if we turn our backs on it, if, it, if we act as if it's not ours, and show disdain, and show that we don't want sovereignty there, and show that it's not holy enough for us to fight for, and that we won't be there, and if rabbis who are supposedly representing the Torah could just engage in baseless hatred and demagoguery, and instead of respecting the classic process of the formation and the transmission of Jewish law by citing the sources, examining the sources, discussing them, and instead just issuing blanket condemnations of great men who are willing to, to discuss the sources and point out the historical precedents, then, yeah, you're going to have to have armed guards at every synagogue. You know why? Because you're falling apart as a nation, because you don't have your anchor, your focus, and you have no reason or validation even to be in this land or exist if you cannot 
prove your connection to who you are as a people, which is all emanating from the Temple Mount. And there's been so much discussion about, about this, and it's just, again, degraded into such nonsense of baseless name-calling and silliness when the subject is so erudite and complex and learned and beautiful and has so many different facets and, and so many different... Uh, concepts and and has so much history and 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 so much development over the centuries with all the great greatest lumin, luminaries and and authorities of Judaism weighing in to the whole concept of yes determining where the temple stood yes determining how we can go there today yes determining how it should be done because it's our job because we're not supposed to wait for God to do something and so obviously everything is coming to a head now because there is a huge religious war being waged against the entire world. Didn't ISIS release the, the most barbaric video 15 minutes long, including the execution of Peter Kassing, who himself converted to Islam? I guess it didn't help him. Isn't that what's going on all over the world right now? And instead of denying it, do you see exactly what the wave of the future is as opposed to what the prophet Isaiah tells us, as opposed to the mandate of the prophets of Israel, that we are responsible for bringing peace to the world through the concept of the Shekhinah coming into the world and the Holy Temple. On the positive side, Rabbi, and this was the positive, positive side. side. On the positive side, the according to recent polls, uh, there is an increasing interest among Jews here in Israel and going up to the Temple Mount. That the recent events, the attempted assassination of Yehuda Glick, who is recovering uh, quickly, and that is also a very positive side. Uh, that the reaction to that is not uh, to scare people away, but to encourage more people to come, come up to the Temple Mount. That revolution, the return of Jewish hearts and souls to the Temple Mount, uh, is not going to be stopped. All the violence in the world can't put a stop to it. Netanyahu can uh, do what he'll do. I don't know what he'll do. He'll he'll uh, let uh, ten Jews up at a time, five Jews up at a time, no Jews. I don't know what, but uh, the 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 revolution has begun and it can't be stopped. It and can't by be the way, around. it would seem <clears throat> just according to our experience of this week and uh, the, the the times that I went up to the Temple Mount this week, it would it would seem that there is a lot going on behind the scenes between Netanyahu and and uh, Abdallah because. Now, all of a sudden, there are new dra draconian measures in place about the size of Jewish groups and how only five could go up at a time, only six could go up at a time. What is it all about? Apparently, a promise was made, and this has surfaced in, in the news outlets. A promise was made by Netanyahu to Abdal that he will limit the amount of Jews that are going on to the Temple Mount, and we'll see where that goes exactly. But the fact is, yes, the attempted assassination against Yehuda, who is recovering remarkably, thank God, and the, the public discourse that has ensued as far as what exactly is this all about with Jews wanting to pray on the Temple Mount, again, nothing really having changed over the past decades except the amount of people that are willing to take a stand. And this has galvanized this movement so that more and more rabbis that are considered to be respectable mainstream rabbis from the first league are issuing proclamations that they identify and support, identify with and support the notion of Jews praying on the Temple Mount. And that is a reflecting in these polls and the subject of, of how we have become so disconnected from the Temple Mount over the years and, and how it's become so mythologized so that we don't even understand these, these important concepts in Jewish law. This is all starting to, to really uh, become part of, 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 um, of, of a public consciousness and, and discourse, and it's rapidly changing. And, and we are working on this night and day, night and day, fighting against these prejudices and against these... Um, uh, um, vicious attacks, statements that are not backed up and that have no standing in the realm of halakha, statements that disdain and show contempt for Jews who are so God-fearing and so careful and so righteous in their preparation and in their knowledge of ascending the Temple Mount in purity for the sole purpose of, of showing proper reverence and honor to the God of Israel. Remember him? Remember him, it's not about a political appointment, it's not about a seat in the Knesset, it's not about a, 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 a salary, it's not about a title, it's about Jews are supposed to go and show honor to God, and that's where it all starts, and that's where it all happens. So, 
um, irregardless of the of the current controversy, the fact is it's just another deeper, stronger push and motivation. But um, I have a, been working on a book in English. I've mentioned it in the past. We are um, associated with a, an important publisher in Jerusalem that we are committed to publishing this book in 2015. And if I do say so myself, I think it, I think it will contribute a great deal to the current discourse regarding the, the validity and the uh, positive aspect of the commandments of ascending to the Temple Mount in our day. And another part of this volume will deal with the actual the actuality, in other words, not just the building of vessels, but the actuality of, according to the halachic sources of Jewish tradition, of building the Holy Temple in our time. What's stopping us? What's not stopping us? Can we do it now? Looking forward very much to finishing this book in uh, due course over the next few months. It will be released in 2015, God willing, and it will be accompanied by the simultaneous, hopefully, more or less, release of a series of short video lessons that we are uh, investing a great deal of time and effort into that will illustrate uh, also the main um, myth mythology that has sprung up around these concepts um, and that will, that will attempt to expose and diffuse um, the... Um, the uh, mythology that people are subscribed to that seems to hold them to hold us back from the actual building of the temple in our time so this is something that we're very very much committed to finishing as soon as possible and it certainly is extremely timely and i'm hopeful that this book will answer in luxurious detail um, with total um, access to to the important sources for all to see what's really going on, the background of these important issues, and I hope it will settle for many people the validity of ascending to the Temple Mount and the very real, real obligation, not just possibility, but obligation that we have of building the Holy Temple in our time. This would be a good time to mention that due to personal circumstances for both myself and um, Yitzhak Ruvain, um, Temple Talk will not be heard for the next few weeks. Um, the next Temple Talk will be coming to you on the eve of Hanukkah. That is on Tuesday, the 24th day of the month of Kislev, God willing, December 16th. So for three weeks, we will have a temporary hiatus from Temple Talk, and we will be coming back to you live, God willing, on 24th day, Erev Hanukkah, 24th day of Kislev, December 16th, will be the next Temple Talk. Back to this week's parsha, Rabbi, in the closing minutes of Temple Talk, where everything you know, it just seems to be such a perfect mirror of, of today's times, and everything seems to be, you know, not what it not what it appears to be. And I'm thinking of when Yaakov brought the brought the the food to his father Yitzchak that, that Yitzchak so much desired before he were to give a blessing. And Yitzhak, of course, is blind. But I'm wondering how, how blind he really is. You know, he managed, despite being blind, and despite, you know, sort of a, uh, um, an attempt for Rivka and Yaakov to deceive him, he saw through the deception, and he, and he picked the true, the true son worthy of the blessing. That, of course, was Yaakov. And deception wasn't necessary at all in the final end. And he says a very beautiful thing. He says, "I," he says, "Re, reach hasadeh." Beni, the, the scent of my son is like the scent. And it's of interesting the field. because he says, "I," he says, "See, behold, see the scent of the of the of the field." Why doesn't he say, "Smell it"? So I'm wondering, you know, he sees, he sees, and what is the scent of the field? The scent of the field is the scent of the Garden of Eden. It's the scent of the place of the Holy Temple. And of course, y Yitzchak himself was praying in the field. He knows exactly what the field is. He knows who the Temple Mount belongs to. He knows in whose future the Holy Temple is. There's no deception here. 
you know, Esau comes back and he starts to wail again and to holler, Oh, I've been deceived again. But he was the one who declared himself when he wanted that porridge to, and wanted to sell his birthright that I'm going to die. That he, his is a, is a philosophy Temporal, right. and civilization of death. I'm going to die that I have, I have no spiritual underpinnings or connection. I don't, no what, do I need, what do I need the spiritual side of life for? What do I need the Temple Mount? What do I need the Holy Temple for? That's not my world. What do I my need the legacy of, 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 of Yitzchak for? I'm not going to be the torchbearer. I don't want it. I don't want to fix the world. I don't want the spiritual responsibility. So what's all the nonsense about? What's all the duplicity about today? We know, we know from way back, from way back, that there's a world and there's a people in the world who, who, who believes in life and believes in God's light in the world. And there's a, a people in the world that worships death and darkness. And God's light in the world is what the Holy Temple is all about. And that's what we're aspiring for, and that's what we're striving for, and we won't be stopped. God willing, uh, let's all hope for, for better news and uh, that people should recover. Everybody who was injured in the attacks should, should have a before shleima. Thank you for being with us. Temple Talk.